Welcome back everybody. Today we talk, and this is really for the beginners and for, for interested ones in Asiatic archery, about the different bow designs. And they came up in all from, from, from Turkey over Korea, China, all over the place. They developed different styles of uh, bows and today we talk about a few of these differences. And the first obvious difference is the size. Here we have Turkish, Tatar, Turkish, uh, Korean, early Mongolian, Qinghai, another Mongolian, and then it goes up to the Manchurian, to the Qing dynasty one. So you see size is already a big difference. And the second basic differentiation is these two. You see it, this is a non-contact sear bow and this is a contact sear bow. Where's the difference? Usually the contact sear bows have a little more aggressive sears, in this case not so much, but the string will slap here in the release and give a little kick to the arrow, whilst this is a bit more smooth. So non-contact sear, contact sear, the other difference. When you see the, the typical Tatar design bow, they're all roughly the same looking. Some have a little shorter bending section, the other have a little longer bending section. Shorter bending section, but a longer, stiff, non-bending sear. And then the sear shapes are different. You see this is a short sear with a bit more curve. The other one is a long C, a bit more straight. So these are then the, the small differentiations you can have. And basically you can say the shorter the bow, usually the shorter the draw length. Not always you can get a, a Korean bow with quite some draw length where others might struggle to reach that. Most of these bows are fiberglass bows in 25 pounds because I first of all want to compare them and second of all still looking for kind of my starter set bow. Only this one is not from Alibo, this is the Black Shadow from Nomad, a Korean bow, but it has roughly 25 pounds to it, 28. And this is um, the Manju bow, the Yarha but this is, I think, 50 pounds at 28 and whatever, so you can't compare them. I, today, most probably, I can't even draw them fully. So this is just that you see the size comparison and how they, how they got there, where they are right now. The next thing you can say in general, the shorter the bow, the more lightweight arrows you can use. So as example the, the Turkish bow or the Korean bow, they shoot them with 5-6 grain per pound. What does that mean? As example, this bow is 25 pounds at 28 inches. I draw this bow 32 inches and at 32 inches let's say this bow has now 30 pounds. Okay. General rule is always that the arrow should be 10 grain per pound. So that would in this case mean it's a 30 pound bow. 10 grain per pound means the arrow should be 300 grain per pound minimum. With a Tatar you can go a little lower than that. But of course if you have now a 30 pound Korean and you can shoot this one with let's say 5-6 grain then you had 150 or 180 grain in this case but it might be a bit tricky to get the arrow in that low uh, weight, but you could do that. Whereas if you would have now a... Which one did they limit? I think the Qinghai. If you have this now with 30 pounds, Alibo limits this one already to 13 grain per pound. So it would have 30 pound at full draw, 
times 13 is 390 grain per pound minimum aerobate. And with Manjubos you are 12, 15, 20 grain per pound upwards. So this is the thing you need to know. Depending on which bow you get, you have a certain arrow weight, a minimum arrow weight that it's not dry firing or destroying the bow. With fiberglass bows in general, it's not a bigger problem, but if you have a laminated bow, you can have a problem. Furthermore, one of these more general rules is the longer the bow, the less dynamic, so to say, is your shooting. So when you shoot this one, there is almost nothing moving. You know, there's no fancy motion here. This is rock steady and doesn't move. Where else? And what we all know. Some people still think you don't need it, but that's why they made them. This is a more agile bow and with this one you can do then all your katra and stuff, you know, whatever have you. Korean bows are in general built that they... Shh. They, they torque and then they even rotate the bow bang forward or stuff like this or at least sideways out like bang like this. So. They are more so the shorter bows are more dynamic and then you have these mid-range long bows where you need to see what you can do. As example, this is this is like a mini mancho. This is a Ching Hai, so it's, it's a Tibetan bow, but it's already designed as very close to the mancho. You see you have the string bridges, the long sears. This one is a long draw, but it's a nice one. So, so I might do individual reviews too, but we see today it's about the general that you get an idea what there is out there and then it depends what draw length you want to get. With Turkish bows in general you are 29, 30 inches, there are a few bows out there do a bit more, but in general that's what you get with a short Turkish bow. If this is enough, a bow like this will work fine for you. Tatar bows in general, I mean these are Crimean, Crimean Tatar bows, but even in Turkey they had Tatar bows. They draw in general then it's up to 32 inches. So this is, I think, does the job for almost everyone. Still quite short, so this is I guess the most common famous bow design. With uh, Korean bows, depends, you can have these bows from 44 inches, this one is 48 inches up to 52 inches. This one draws 31 and a half, so almost like the Tatar. If you get a little longer you can draw more. Then it continues, this is as example from the Ming Dynasty, the Keiyuan. And a very clear indicator is the knock design. They made it, they say so, that you can pick up from the horse arrows from the ground, but I don't know. This one is now longer, but draws only 30 inches. So due to the design and the length of the bending section, usually the longer the sears, the shorter the draw is again. Because here when you see there is almost no sear, there is even the, this recurve part bending. And here's nothing bending, so here, let's, let's take a, a comparable one. When you see Tatar and Korean are kind of like the same length, but then you see the bending section of the Korean starts here and goes out here and continues even, the, the, the recurve is only a little reinforced, but acts, is, is an active sear. And here bending section of the Tatar starts at the same point, but ends here where it amounts into the sear and the sear is completely stiff. So there you get a longer draw, a smoother draw, but here you get this, this lever action. So once the sear comes over, it will really bend this bending part of the limb. So these are these little differences. At the end you will not end up with one bow, you will have more, but just that you get an idea of it. Then you get in this area, in this range of the Kayu and we had already. This is the Naching. This is an early Mongolian. The early Mongolians had again a short bending section and the long relatively straight here. This one draws now 32 inches, which is just fine. Oh, knacks, you heard that. So sometimes fiberglass bows make a little noise with the first draws. 
This is the older version, and then you get the new version, the Nöcker, which is, I guess, one of the really good fiberglass bows out there. It's completely covered in leather without the stitching, so it looks a little fancy. I got it in black, you can have different colors. This one is almost the similar. So this is the Genghis Khan, and this is a Nokia. What you see here as example, the Genghis Khan has a little more flex in the handle, whereas the Nokia is a bit more straight. Is again more forgiving, but these are small and minor things. And the limb section is almost the same, and the sear section is relatively similar. So these are the little differences you have. Nokia. I said one of the really good ones we have with a knocker, 31 inch straw, almost the same. Oh, made a noise too. Nice. What you get now with these uh, long extreme sears is the early compound effect. So this bow, as example, if has now 40 pounds. At the beginning you need to overcome this. You see that until the sear kicks in and then back there it's all of a sudden shoot. then you don't feel the straw it anymore because these sears really work like a lever and squish the limbs together so this is as I said the early compound bows and this is a really nice one draws 33 inches it's Qinghai so this is really you can say the smaller brother of the Manchu and the Manchu then, of course, with this massive sears, it's the longest bow. It's even in China called longbow. Even if we have other classification for that, it's, I guess, the longest bow they used in China. I mean, this is like, goes here. So, I mean, the Chinese people were like the size of this bow. And this is then 35 inch draw, 36 inch draw. Oh, never ending draw, but this is just, Oh, but this one I don't shoot. So now you know roughly what you want. Now you get, let's say, a Turkish bow as a, as a beginner, as a first bow. And then you think about which arrows should I get. Of course you can get uh, wood arrows, but they are... I said this bow has 25 pounds at uh, 28 inches. At 29 max, so this bow has maybe 27, 28. But let's give it 28 pounds. Minimum arrow weight is whatever, 5, 6, even if it's 10, it's 280 grain. And these wood arrows are most probably 350 or something. So wood arrows will, in this class, always be a little heavy. But of course they are more traditional and more what have you. And it's still nice to shoot them, so don't get me wrong. They yeah, fly actually quite nice. <laughs> Said it! And ruin the shot. Of course you can get then extremely light where there are thousand spine with spine in this video we do another video. They are 29 inches, just the right length for the bow. Then you see already they are way faster. So less arrow weight, more arrow speed. But of course the lesser the arrow weight the more you might feel it in the handle in case of hand shock, but it's still okay. You can go, of course, for some mid-ground. They are now between the wood arrows and these extreme lightweight carbon arrows. Oh, they go a bit to the right there, too stiff. But then you do a little cutter and compensate for that. So. Turkish bow, one of the final developments in bow design, then they changed to crossbows and to firearms. This is, is one of the most developed bows. And why is the Tatar so similar to the Turkish bow? Look at this, they have the same sear design. They are then only the Tatar is a little longer and has a little different hand. You see the flex in the handle. And the Turkish one is almost the only bow which has this handle pointing more towards the back and not towards the belly. And the Tatar bow is just a little, has a little longer uh, bending section from here to here. And then this different shape of handle. So you can draw a little longer, can shoot heavy arrows. It's not so fast, but draws 32 inches which is just nice, I guess. Yep. 
So even if it's only 30 inches and you max out a Turkish one, get a Tatar, 32 inches. That's the job, shoots just nice. With Korean bows, there are different versions out. So this is now a cheap version with a modern handle. I say it's not the Korean style handle. If you get a Korean bow and you want to shoot Korean style, make sure you get this Korean handle. I put a photo there. Um, this is, then you need to hold the bow differently and you can shoot the Korean style. This one you can shoot normally if you want. This one does 31.6 inches. The Koreans are very specific in the maximum draw length. What they always have the Koreans is a relatively short brace head, so the distance between the bow to the string, but a relatively wide uh, arrow pass here, so that's why with a Korean bow you almost are forced to shoot torque, otherwise the arrows will go far off. But you learn every bow. And works nice, draws nice, shoots nice. It's the first time I shoot this bow. They are with the fastest and in Korea they shoot 145 meters even with 30 pound bows so it's not a big thing. Next, 30 inches. Do I have 30 inch arrows? They should be 30. So, the KU one. What did we learn? Non-contact, exactly. A little longer so it's a little more than... You see it's still close to the Tatar design handle is not that much bending, but then you have the, you know, it's everything is a little longer and then the sear is not, has not this angle from the bush to the kazan, it's a more straight sear. But this is then, you know, every region had their own bow developed and different sear angle, different sear length, is this straight sear, a, a bend sear, so there are these small differences, but it's doesn't really matter. So this one draws 30 inches, but draws nice 30 inches, and even these lightweight arrows. Nice. So this one is a nice bow. So even with these fiberglass bows, they cost, I don't know, 60, 70, 80, 100, 150 dollars. You are not going wrong with them. They work just nice. They are fast enough and you don't have to care that much about. The short Qinghai does 31 inches. Short Qinghai is like a mini Manchu, so if you don't need that long draw or don't want that long draw, or if you're a smaller person and 31 inches is enough. <laughs> That's just awesome. Look at this. <laughs> but you feel a little ding because when the string hits the string bridge it shortens it instantly and you get this little a little manju kick but this is what we are after when we want the bow like this even in Mongolia they had then in later Mongolia they had these bows and they're like Mongolian was at a small string bridge maybe not that big and the sea is maybe a little shorter or longer and the early Mongolians were still non-contact seer bows, so that's a difference here again. Contact seer, non-contact seer, but both Mongolian bows too. Let's shoot this one. Does 32 inches means need to get my arrows back. And these early Mongolians are just fantastic bows. For me, I like them. I like the design. They are just fine. They draw like there's no tomorrow. This is just overall, I think for me, one of the nicest bow designs, but I like them all. And of course, this selection is now in nowhere near comprehensive. There are so many more bows, shapes, designs out that it's just beyond what I can show. So this is then the, the newer Mongolian. The, it's still an early Mongolian, 31 inches. 31 inches. The knocker, incredible bow. So this is a really incredible bow. Yeah, this one really means business. So when you draw this one, you feel directly 
there's some some different unfolded zeros are way too <laughs> so thousand spine it's a bit too less but you shoot nice groups of course they go a little left because the arrows are a little too light spined but you shoot a little heavier spined arrows a bit higher spined arrows they are only 29 inches but that you see 29 and a half inches and this bow performs still nice so you don't need to max throw but of course it's nice too shooting. <laughs> Longest one I will shoot today. This is the Long Qinghai. Draws 33 inches. Oh, I have arrows directly here. They are 33. Maybe a little too stiff there. 500 spine we see. 33 inches is an already look at this. There you need to... There you don't have an anchor point in your face anymore. Your anchor point is when the tip of the arrow is reaching your, your index finger or something, then you know full draw is reached. This is a different shooting experience. Nice. Shoot these ones. 36 inches, so they're a little too long, but they're pretty. And I didn't shoot them yet, so that's why we will shoot them now. You see, we have a nice fletching on it. So pretty. So look at this. Oh, and they fly. Just nice. Wow. And I think you can draw this bow even a little more, but don't tell anyone. Oh, Klaus, thank you very much for these arrows. They fly awesome, even with this one, which is supposed to do only 33 inches, but... So, and the mantra I said is only decoration today. I don't shoot this one, it's too heavy for me. Now, quickly, that you see the bow from the side, a nice profile photo when I shoot the bow. We start, of course, with the shortest, with the Turkish one. You see that? You can do your katra stuff, you can do string twist, but for this, I will do other videos. And this thing is really good, so you don't don't think you need to spend a lot of money. With this one, you can go on a 3D parkour and you will do great, even with a 25 or 30 pound. Don't worry about that. If, of course, 28, 9 inches draw, 30 inches is a little too limiting for you, take the Tatar. It's the next step. 32 inch, look at this. We the air is a little too soft. Need to get a little stiffer arrows for this one here. Oh, you, 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 jack! Boom, jackalaka! But it's still nice here working, Katra and stuff. Still great for that. Now let's visit Korea, have some nice bulgogi. <laughs> Just joking. And of course, every culture and every time period they had their different shooting styles. So one stood more open to the target, the other's perpendicular. But this is, leads now too far. It's not only to show you the bow. So it's a Korean bow. I hold it up right there. You see the curves. Look at this. You see how far this bow bends even if it's quite short because there is from here up to here everything bending. That's why you get a nice long smooth draw out of it. And it's Kicks light arrows just nice away. And then of course you do your whatever you have to do with these ones they are made for this. Huh? Now we come to the longer ones. This is the KU one, a Ming, Ming Dynasty style bow. That you feel now already in the hand that this is not so agile anymore because you have quite big long here. So you feel already the motion and the momentum of the bow. So these ones are not that great for a katra and stuff. You can still do a little torque if you have to. If you, but as I said, the longer, bigger the bows, the less motion you have in your draw. But they still work fine and this one shoots just nice. The arrows are a little too soft. A thousand spines, not going to work. 
pot. Nice. Let's shoot some stiff arrows. So they are only 30 inches, but it's fine. We could do maybe 30. So it's 29 and a half sungur. But they're a little stiffer, so spine matters. Oh, and then it goes in the center. And you see 29 and a half, it's easy. So it's almost, you can overdraw this bow and have no problem with it. Oh, speaking of which, again the K-Yarn, don't do that at home. I shoot my 32 inch arrows, let's see how long I can draw this one. Until I feel that it's reaching the limit, so this is 30. See, there is a little more, there is no stacking. You could most probably even draw 31 inches. And it still works nice. Next one is a short Qinghai. Kind of like gives you the mini manjo experience, but I guess my arrows are just too soft for it. Does 31, but look at this. It's no stacking. Might even do 32. <laughs> Goes in the center then, so the arrows are a little too soft. But I have others, my Taurus from Bamboo Archery, Malaysia. Oh, go a bit to the left, they are too stiff. 400, yeah, I got another 400 ones, that's too stiff. But you can make it work, you torque a little, it's fine. This bow is just nice working. The Genghis Khan, the early Mongolian, the older version of the early Mongolian, does 32 inches. Yep, arrows are too soft for it, yes, we know that. But just handle is big, beefy, just nice. So this bow delivers just fine. A bit stiffer, heavy arrows. Nice. It's a good bow. It's a really good bow, this Genghis Khan. So if you're on a budget and you want to draw 32 inches, a little more fancy than a, a Tatar Genghis Khan. Bit to the left, too stiff, the 400. I need to get other arrows, but awesome. Let's let's shoot the younger brother of the early Mongolian, the Nuker. Nuker, one of my favorite fiberglass bows at the moment. Really good bow. Draws only 31 inches officially, but look at this. Let's see. I think there's no problem drawing this one 32. But of course, then you lose your warranty. Bit stiffer arrows with it. Yep, and heavy. But this is just a nice bow. This draw is. Okay, so if you like the early Mongolian as a fiberglass, this nuker, as a laminated, the laminated nuker. It's quite simple as that. Just amazing. The 31 inches max draw are a little very safe, so. But of course, if you want a little more, 33 inches, solid 33 inch draw, and a little manchu kick, then go with the long uh, Jinghai. This is like a manchu bow. Look at this. <laughs> this is this longer draw. The arrow is longer in contact with the string. It's just boom. It's, and the penetration power. They are not so fast, but they can throw heavy arrows. And they have then they, they punch through the target like there is no tomorrow. Incredible bow too. So they are all really nice. So there you have it, a few basic, uh, a, bit, a little bit of basic information about the different bow designs and what you have to take care of. So, you know, a Turkish bow is like with, with, with Katra and more dynamic shooting, stuff like this. And a long one like this Qinghai, you know, you don't want to do Katra. So you hold the hand steady, you have maybe a little torque in it, but you need to be careful with torque with long bows. They don't like torque in general, but this one, you don't move your bow hand. Whereas with a Turkish bow, you chuck, you know, you have this dynamic. So you always need to know what you want to shoot, what should your draw length be, or you just 
simply order the Qinghai in the Turkish. They are all not very expensive. Order directly matching arrows with it. If it's your first order with Alibo, you can put the voucher code Armin10 in the, in, the, in the thing in the cart when you check out, and then you get 10% off. So then you should save a little money. So both interesting, awesome to shoot. And then if you think, okay, that's too short, and the other one is a little too long, and I'm not sure yet. Okay, 31 inches, maybe 32. It's still a little agile, so you feel it, but not so much, and you can still operate this bow nice. And with this one, you still can do a little cutter and stuff. So this is, look at the bow. Duck. So you, it is, with this one, it's still nice. So even if it's already quite long, when you see it, it's almost the same length, but it's just a different... With this, this doesn't feel like it wants to anymore. But this one, it's just fine, a little heavier, but fine. And then you have all these iterations of bows. No, not iterations, it's the wrong word. In between the short Qinghai or the, the Keiyuan, which is a pretty bow. And I said with this uh, Nokia, that you can pick up arrows from the shell, and I don't do it now. It's a nice tool. So it's, it, this is almost like a Manchu without string bridges. The only thing I realized here, the handle is quite small, so they are not the same. When you see this one, handle is very small. Nöcker, the handle is generous, it feels just nice. That's why it makes this bow so nice to operate. The handle is nice for my hand. But it should not be now a... Uh, a review, a review of the bows, but this one, 30 inches. Let's shoot the stiffer arrow. This is a longer arrow. It's 32 inches, but look at this. See that? Max draw, 30. And look at the arrow. Here, 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 and still nothing. So I draw no 31 inches. It's no problem. So with a fiberglass bow, it's more a guidance. <laughs> they don't tilt a lipo, but this bow really draws without problem. 31. And if you force the bow, even 32. So yeah, just nice. If you want to go very traditionally and you say, okay, I want this, what, what most probably has the most influential design all over the place, the critics don't get me now. 32 inch, I don't have the stiff ones anymore, they fly better. A Tatar bow is always a nice option. So this is really a good bow to start with. You have still the agility of a Turkish bow here with everything. But you can draw a little more, uh, and this, the handle design of the Turkish, or the design of the Turkish bow in general is not for everyone. It's not my favorite design. So if a bow design, this is for me how an Asiatic bow should look like. This might be the better bow, but yeah, you know, it's a matter of taste. And if you want to go a little different, a Korean bow, you only need to be careful these bows out there, the cheap ones, they are quite... Uh, but you need to know how to string this bow and you should operate this bow according to its design. So first of all, get the one with the Korean handle and then learn how to shoot this bow properly. So, But I don't do now sky draw because we don't do this in, in Western here. But then you have this... You see, with this one, it's easy peasy. So they are nice too. It's a complete different thing. So I think later on you want to have a Korean bow, but it's not your only bow. And then for the rest, it, it, it really doesn't matter. Even the short Qinghai is uh, 31 inches. Look at the Qinghai, 31 inches. So, easy, 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 easy. Look at this. So this one's 
I don't want to say stacking because it draws 31 inches, but afterwards it gets really stiff. This one did not get stiff so easy. And then, uh, of course, let, let's shoot one. One last arrow with a long draw. So these arrows are a little too long. <laughs> too kind of long. Draws 33 inches. You see, you don't have this big motion here in the hand anymore. But you don't need it. So this is a different style of shooting then. So this is just... You stand there, you see how far I draw back and then you just release back there. You, oh, this is... Once you... What do I say? Once you draw more than 32, 33 inches, it's tough to go back. Because it's just such a different feeling releasing back there instead of here somewhere. This is just incredible. So all these bows are not so expensive. I think the Nurkar is $160. It's the most expensive Turkish and, and Tatar $60, $70, So not much money what we're talking about, but a lot of fun and to experience different designs that you say, I would like to test how, how does a Turkish bow feel, get this one, you know, compared to whatever, let's say, the, 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 the mini Manchu, that you get these two shooting experiences on a budget. And then you know, and you get them in 25 pounds, they, they are enough for training. That's why I bought them 25 pounds, because I will use them for my training later. My students can choose directly different bow designs, but all with the same draw weight. Of course, they're all 25 pounds at 28. This one draws 29 inches, so 28 pounds. This one draws four inches more. Then instead of 25, this bow might have then 35 at full draw. This bow draws 33 inches, so five inches more, roughly 12, 13 pounds more. So it's not 25 at the end. It might be 37, 38 or something. But with this bow, it's hilariously, you don't feel it because the limbs, you see the design of the limbs, how they come in. This is the Manchu, <laughs> the mini Manchu. So, which one is my favorite? I love them all. If I had to choose one, I would most probably start with a Tatar and get the long, it's because it's just, just because, or the Nöcker. I most probably would get the Nöcker to start with and then maybe okay, I want to try something shorter and something longer. You can even take, and this is what we didn't manage yet. Uh, the thing is with the draw weight, uh, the longer the bow or the, the, the more, let's say, sophisticated the design, the more poundage you need on the bow that you get this performance you want. So if you get now this Manchu bow in 25 pounds, it might not be the, the shooting experience you are after because this one is now, I forgot, 60 or something. 60 at full draw. And I think this is kind of like uh, the minimum for a Manchu that you really get this experience. I would say 35 pounds should be at 28, that you end up roughly 50 pounds at full draw. Then you get this, this Manchu experience. With a Turkish bow, even in 25 or 30 pounds, it feels just great. So these ones are not so demanding from the weight, from the design. These ones are more demanding, they need poundage. So don't start with a Manju in 25 pounds. Work your way up, maybe even get this, this one here. Works incredibly well in 25 pounds. So, and then at full draw, you're at, let's say, 35, 40 pounds. This is just nice. You get this experience, you, you, you learn how to deal with it and later get a Manju in 35, 40 pounds at 28 and 50 at least in full draw, I would say. But that's, that's me. That was quite something today, um, but I wanted to get this out because I get asked so often which bow should I get and what would you recommend. It's really 
a matter of what you like. And today I wanted to give you some hints and insight of things that might be helpful in your decision making. I mean, again, even here this design difference, look at this narrow limbs here but with string bridges and here the, the early Mongolians had wide limbs you know it's a complete different thing a different vibe a different tool even if they are almost you know, the string length is almost the same so but they're completely different and then you really need to know what your draw lengths will be and which style you like you know but they're all just awesome and you can start with all of them only don't get the Manchu in 25 pounds. I think it's not enough poundage for this bow. But I said the Tatar bow is just fine. Tatar and the Nöker or Tatar and the Qinghai long. Then you have something a little shorter draw, a little longer draw with string bridges. Tatar has kind of like, it's almost, it's not a string bridge but it has a groove there. So it's, it's close to a contact seer bow. And then you will figure out, make sure that you directly order the matching arrows with it. Then you don't have the hassle of finding arrows. If you don't, you can get in Germany at Niora.de from Klaus Schüssler. These incredible, I mean, he has a lot of these are from him. These are, these are the Bark 1000 Niora. So I have a lot of them because they are just fine and they're robust and they work. That, that Niora, nice arrows, or you go to, they are now in the target. The Taurus from Bamboo Archery Malaysia, you can have them different spine, different length. They are just well made and they just work. Or you can even go to Bogensport Austria I have. Where are they? Somewhere here. They are from, no, this is the Bark too. I have from Bogensport Austria. Some kind of like the same work the same. So in Austria, it depends where you are, that you save shipping costs. Or if you like it a bit more fancy, the Sungurs from Mamluk Archery in Turkey. Different length available, different spines available, and they just work too. They have these nice bullet tips on it, which I like. And then you're good to go. But best is always get directly arrows with it, get all your stuff with it. If you order for the first time there, put the voucher code ARMY10 in it, you get 10% off and start practicing. I will follow up with a few different videos about um, how to take care and maybe do an online course that you really learn step by step how to shoot with a thumb ring or thumb leather protection or without, which I do often in these poundages because it's not a problem. I wanna see? Okay, I show you. Let me show you its features. See, it's not a problem. You train your thumb a bit. Even Stephen Selby said that. Boom, check. Of course you don't shoot 1,000 arrows a day. In the beginning, you need to build up your colors. So thank you very much Ali Bo for making all these incredible bows. They will go now when I finish even to my courses everywhere because it's just nice so people can experience different bows and know directly a bit more what they like or not. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.